This video will cover binomial distributions, which are a type of discrete distribution. We will first compare discrete and continuous distributions of a single random variable, and then we'll look at the binomial distribution specifically. There are two types of random variables, discrete and continuous. A discrete random variable has only a finite number of possible values, whereas a continuous random variable has a continuum of possible values. Usually a discrete distribution results from a count, whereas a continuous distribution results from a measurement. The distinction between counts and measurements is not always clear-cut. A probability distribution is simply a mapping of all distinct events for a variable and their probability of occurrence, such as the distribution of a coin flip experiment. The form of the distribution depends on whether the variables are discrete or continuous. Here are some examples of discrete variables, outcomes of dice rolls, whether a customer likes or dislikes a product, or the number of hits on a website. Some examples of continuous variables include the weekly change in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, daily temperature, or the time between machine failures. To specify the probability distribution of event X, we need to specify all of its possible values and their probabilities. We assume that there are k possible values and write out our list of possible values like this. A typical value is denoted like this. And the probability of a typical value is denoted like this. Next, we will discuss distributions of both discrete and continuous variables. For each type of variable, distributions can be characterized by three measures, mean, variance, and standard deviation. These are formulas for working with discrete distributions. While we won't be computing these measures by hand, you do need to be aware of the formulas. The mean, also called the expected value, is calculated with this formula. The mean is a weighted sum of all possible values, weighted by their probabilities. Mean is denoted by the Greek letter mu. The variance is a weighted sum of the squared deviations of the possible values from the mean, where the weights are, again, the probabilities. The standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Standard deviation is denoted by the Greek letter sigma. These are the formulas for working with continuous distributions. A probability distribution visually summarizes the probabilities associated with all possible events for a variable. We will focus on three probability distributions that are commonly used in explaining real-world events. Binomial and exponential distributions are used with discrete data, while normal distributions are used with continuous data. A binomial distribution is a discrete distribution that represents the number of successes in n independent trials, each of which has the probability of success p. Each trial has a binary outcome. For example, a coin toss yields either heads or tails. The probability of either observation, heads or tails, is the same each time we toss the coin. These outcomes are generally called success and failure. The probability of success is p, and the probability of failure is 1 minus p. The distribution maps the outcome of all the trials. Each trial has to be independent, and the probability of success has to be the same for each trial. This is the probability mass function formula for a binomial distribution. If we toss a coin 100 times, what is the probability that we will get 40 heads? What is the probability of getting 90 heads? That probability can be computed by applying this formula. We have only two possible outcomes, 1, 0, or success failure, in n independent trials. This formula depicts the probability of exactly x successes. n is the number of trials. x is the number of successes out of n trials. p is the probability of success. And 1 minus p is the probability of failure. All probability distributions are characterized by an expected value and variance. If we toss a coin 100 times, what would be the average number of heads we would get? What about the variance? These are computed using these formulas. You'll often see the assumptions of normal distribution being applied to discrete outcomes. This is because the binomial distribution approximates to a normal distribution for large samples. So for large enough samples, we can calculate probabilities using normal probability rules. This concludes our video on binomial distributions. Today we covered discrete and continuous distributions of a single random variable and the binomial distribution. 